Hi, my name is Janelle Noel, and I am a missionary with Youth with a Mission. I am a mother, I am a wife, and I've been doing full-time missions. This year will make 20 years. So it's been a journey for me as a missionary, um, starting off as a single missionary, transitioning to a wife, and now a mother. And um, I have to say that I've grown throughout these stages and I've learned a lot throughout these stages and seeing God meet me as in all my capacities during uh, my time in missions. How I got started in missions. I would have to say the seeds were sown in my life from a very tender age. Um, I came to know the Lord probably around five or six years old. I was raised in a God-fearing Christian family. Um, I was a part of a church that was very active. We didn't know a lot about foreign missions, but we knew a lot about community work. And um, they were very, the youth were very involved, children were very involved, and were encouraged to participate in ministry. So from there, I had a love for ministry. Uh, my early me memories of what we would call mercy ministry or compassionate ministry was as a child going to visit shut-ins in homes and district hospitals and sing for the old elderly and the sick and pray and stuff like that. And so those seeds were sown in me from a young, a very young age. And my my parents and others around me would have noticed my love and my zeal. Um, for ministry from that age and they created opportunities for me to do so. I must say when I got into my teenage years that's when you start to have a feel for more of your passions and my passions were the arts, I was interested in dance, drama, poetry, writing. Um, I was interested in the same where I would go around in my community uh, with my church and do door to door evangelism. It was a privilege and a blessing for me anytime somebody gave their life to the Lord. And um, I would mentor um, my peers who didn't know the Lord. And so I kind of felt that kind of pastoral kind of thing where you wanted to guide people to Jesus. Um, yes, I also had a love for languages. I did language in school. I did have to lay that down, um, um, one, at least one of them. I took Spanish up to CSC level, but I had to lay down the French to do something else. <laughs> you know how it goes with choices in schools, but yes. And all of these were things that I was passionate about. Languages, yes. Um, my mom studied linguistics and I was reading her books when she was studying and I was into that and excited about language and culture and those kinds of things. Little did I know, that all of those things were gifts from God, preparing me for my calling. And so I just continued to develop at the age of 15, something very interesting happened. Um, a minister from Guyana came to my home church and he was like a traveling evangelist and it was a type of revival. And he pointed me out, called me up. He did not know me, I did not know him. And he said to my home church, God is gonna take this young lady to the nations. And when he does, be ready to send and support her. And that's just a memory that's etched in my mind because I did not know the path that I was going to take. Um, but I knew that my love for the world and wanting to see the world and go around the world had something to do with where God would take me. So years later, um, I finished my, or I'm in the process of my tertiary education, and my family got connected to a family from YWAM who came to our church to share about the work they were doing in Brazil, in the communities where they did garbage dumps and there's a lot of need, they were doing work there. From there we would get their newsletters and anytime they were in the island, they would come and have lunch and go to our church and share our church and stuff like that. And they challenged me, said, would you consider doing a, a discipleship training school with YWAM, getting trained and stuff? I was had not finished my tertiary education up to that point. So I decided, you know, put it in the back of my mind, though 
probably there'll be a time for it. And so I completed it. And then I started my work. I started to work. And it was during that time in my first year, before the first year of my work, that I felt this nudging concerning missions again, ministry again. Um, up until the point where the YWAM missionaries had come to my church, I knew very little about missions. But after that, I got to get a little better understanding not so fully, but, you know, a little awareness of organizations out there that do missions. Um, yes. And so I turned on my radio driving to work and somebody was on the radio talking about YWAM and their DTS experience. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, I spoke to a manager just telling him the things that I'm interested in. And he said, you sound like somebody would be perfect for missions. Asked me if I knew about why I was like, it's just coming to me from all angles. Maybe there is something to this. And I put in an application to do the DTS. I then went to my pastor and told him, I'm thinking about doing missionary training. And he was more excited than, than I was. I, and I couldn't, I couldn't understand it at the time. But then he said to me, two weeks prior to me coming to him, he went to a DTS graduation at YWAM. And when he heard the type of work and the experiences that they, the young people had, he said, I would love one of my young people to be able to do this, but I don't know who, who's not, not working, is studying, and but Lord, I leave it in your hands. And two weeks later, I come to him and I say, this is what I'm thinking of doing. So he really was like, this is a confirmation. It was for him and for me. And he, was able to give his um, blessing for me, you know, to take that step. And so that's what I did, I took, I took that step, that kind of firmed it up for me. And so I left my job and then I went into um, training for missions. Now, I've just remembered one more thing. There was a missionary that used to come to our primary school and from time to time she was connected to other missionaries and she would bring these other missionaries and they would share missionary stories and I think those were other seeds that were planted in my life at that time so we fast track again and I am now a missionary with why mama I've come and I do a DTS and I said, Lord, what do I do after this? Do I go back to my vocation before? Or do you have something more for me? And I had a sense, yes, God wanted me to continue. And so within a month, I came back on to be a full-time volunteer with Waiwa. So it was during that time that I um, helped serve with the DTS as well. And then the opportunity came up for a school of performing arts. Now, remember I told you the passions I had, dance and theater and different things like that. And I was like, wow, I would really like to do this. And God made it possible for me to do it. And I realized that all the gifts that God gives you, you can use them to build his kingdom. They're valid. There's a place for them. And so, that was a very eye-opening thing. The more skilled I became with honing my gifts, the more opportunities I saw to use them to, you know, tell others about him. And then also during that school, um, I met who would become my husband. He came from Haiti and he was in this school. And let me just drop a, a pin there because before I met him, in my DTS, there were some St. Lucians, and they, were, they would speak Creole every now and then, and I was interested in that. So the first um, Creole I wanted to learn was that. Somebody blessed me with a Creole dictionary, and I started my language learning journey, or rather continued my language learning journey. And then um, here comes this Haitian, and they're pairing me in the school with him because his English is not so great. And I'm there to help him with his English. We became friends, and later relationship developed. We got married, and we have a son. Um, 
the five-year-old son. Yes. So yeah, that was another God thing. Um, so we shared the similar passion with the arts. And so we were able to do, be a part of teams that did ministry in Caribbean islands, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent, Grenada. You know, I was able to use my giftings to have arts evangelism in those different places. Um, I have to say I've had a very interesting journey in missions. Uh, my time in missions has allowed me to um, serve and preach the gospel in the nations that I mentioned before, but also has taken me further afield. Um, I've been to Brazil and Hawaii and Thailand and uh, just had the opportunity to mix with people from different nationalities and proclaim the name of the Lord. I've been able to hear stories um, of missionaries, persons who fled their lands um, to be able to be grounded more in the word and study the word in different parts of the world. And it just has been a wonderful opportunity and journey to be able to do so, to build my faith and to see other person's faith activated as you share with them, you know. Um, so it's a, it's a huge blessing. There are so many, many stories I could tell of God's provision, of God's protection, of God's grace. Um, it's been, an, I mean, it's been a really, you know, it's been a journey. <laughs> But then there are also times that there have been challenges and hard times. Um, I don't think any life or any person is immune to having challenges and certainly not missionaries. We are not. And so, you know, you, there've been times where you had to navigate through difficult circumstances, loss of a loved one, um, um, natural disasters, that have direct impact on you or somebody that you love. Uh, I was in Haiti when there was the earthquake and I've experienced stuff like flood and hurricanes and being away from home, you know, and um, while they have been hard experiences, it's the faith and it's the God and it's the Father God that, that has kept and helped me to navigate. And then there are times when you do you do struggle with um, discouragement because you know you sow a seed or you plant a seed into the ground and you don't always see it come up right away. It takes time. And so there have been times when you've sown seeds and you've wondered, you know, has this been good ground? Am I going to see the fruit in my lifetime even? And, you know, the enemy is there to try to discourage you and make you feel like, you know, and then there are times when you're not even looking for it and there, there the fruit is. There you hear a testimony, there you hear a story, there somebody comes. So it has its ups and its downs and always times, times to adapt. Um, I had mentioned um, language. I did end up learning another language and um, I'm so thankful for that as a gift that I would like to pass on to my son and any other persons who know God will place me in their path to encourage them. Um, I've had the opportunity to, to teach. That was one of my dreams to was to be able to teach English as a second language. And I haven't done it on the large scale that I thought I would, but in short term mission trips, I had the opportunity for those persons who were eager with English because it might provide them a better opportunity. Um, even persons who may have been persecuted in their homelands and they were you know, like seeking refuge in other countries and were trying to study and learn English so that they could get into Bible school or something like that. I was able to do some some short times with some short lessons, the short term teams that we would have sent out are being a part of. So that being said, I look back with a lot of thanksgiving, a lot of praise. I can't only give God thanks. He has put some really um, key persons in my life too. My home church has been awesome and different missionaries I've met along the way. And I just want to encourage 
any person that has a heart for missions, um, just as I did pray and ask the Lord and he will direct, he will direct your path. Um, he will make it clear for you. He does have a plan for you. And it may not be um, long-term like how mine was or even full-time like how mine was, but start where he asks you to start and step by step. Do I still have challenges walking step by step? Yes, I do. Every new challenge that presents itself is an um, opportunity for me to grow in faith. Sometimes I do well, sometimes I don't. <laughs> but that's life, you know? Um, but it is the, the love of God that has been holding me up and the love of wonderful people, uh, my family support, my parents and other family you know, that have been very, very encouraging and very, very supportive. You know, so I just want to encourage you to um, take a step, even if it's a short-term mission trip. You know, God will meet you. He will open your eyes. There's a purpose for everything because there are real people there who need the Savior. They need encouragement. Sometimes it's just a listening ear. Sometimes it is just washing up feet. Sometimes it's just to serve with whatever gifting or talent God has given to you. Sometimes it's just sharing your testimony and it makes a huge difference in somebody's life. It's a pivotal moment for that person. And we don't know how we're impacting life. Sometimes it's clear how you're impacting the life. And sometimes we will only hear the stories after. But God is faithful. And so that, as I said, there's so many stories I could tell. There's so many things I could say. Most I could say is the journey of serving the Lord, the sharing your faith with others, is a journey of love and of obedience. And God is with us. He is. <laughs>